Hi all, my name's Pipes and I would like to welcome you to this Eat3D tutorial on using the Displacement Map Sculpting feature in Mudbox to create a low poly asset for use within a game environment. We will also be using Endu 2 to create the Displacement Map and X Normal to bake out the normal and ambient occlusion maps from the high poly sculpt from Mudbox. Now imagine you're in a production environment, uh, say in a game studio and your art director comes along and says okay pipes we've got this wall and we need it to have a bit more detail to it it's looking a bit bland at the moment is there, can you make a stone relief or something like that now you've got two options you could either look at using ZBrush to go in and carve out some amazing ornate sculpture but the art director wants this quite quickly so using this technique of using a displacement map uh, in Mudbox, we can sculpt something very quickly, get out a really nice normal map and ambient occlusion, and then we can apply that to our low game poly asset, which is the wall. Okay, so what I've done is I've grabbed an image from cgtextures.com and I've tried to find something quite ornate, uh, stone relief, and this one is quite complica complicated and detailed, so it'd be quite good to get all the information out there into a normal map and getting that wall looking a lot more interesting. So what I did, I downloaded that texture, I went into Photoshop, I created a 1K texture, 1024 by 1024 pixels canvas. Okay, now even though the image is rectangular, the reason I did a 1024 by 1024 canvas is due to Mudbox doesn't like non-uniform squared textures. So that's the reason there. I brought in the Diffuse, um, I made a diffuse folder and brought in the image. Okay, I'll just bring that one down. So there you can see I brought in the base texture, scaled it down so it's taking up just half of the uh, texture space to keep it in proportion. I used a levels command here as well just to level out the highlights and the shadows. I brought some of the darks in, brought some of the uh, highlights in, so it's more of a neutral. Uh, texture, just leveled off contrast, and a way that you can check to see if you actually have got um, quite a good leveled off contrast is to look at this mean average here. As you can see, it's 112.5. If it's anywhere between 90 and 120, I'm quite happy that it's quite an, an average contrast. Uh, if you don't have the histogram panel docked into Photoshop there, you can find it under the Windows panel, and it's there under Histogram. I also put a hue saturation on there, just brought the saturation down just a little and the lightness down just a little. Now what I did also is took the diffuse folder, I duplicated that, renamed it specular and created a specular map, which is the same base diffuse but with the levels I brought the, the whites way down to there to darken it off because I don't want it to be too, too reflective because obviously it's stone and just brought some of the mid ranges down also and in the hue and saturation, I dragged the hue slider all the way to the left to give it a bluish tint and the saturation down just to uh, take out some of those tones. Now the reason I did that is because I'd normally go by a rule of thumb of dielectrics, where dielectrics is something that doesn't conduct electricity. So that'd be like stone in this case. So if it's ever uh, doesn't conduct electricity, I normally um, use the complementary colour within the specular. So this was quite an orangey stone. So I brought the hue saturation down and took it into the blue tones because that's complementary colour there. If it did conduct electricity, like a, a metal, say if it was brass, then I would u keep the hue of the specular within the colour of the brass. So if it was quite bronzy, I'd keep it in the oranges and the yellows, maybe with a bit of a more of a high saturation to really make those speculars, the uh, highlights pop there. So I took the diffuse and then I brought up Endu 2 and I went into presets and chose medium standard to create a normal map from this diffuse. And from there this created this normal map here. Okay. And as you can see it's medium standard. I brought down the soft larger details and also brought down the soft larger details. I didn't want it to be too lumpy. Left the medium definition and the small details where they were. And then I took this normal map and then I converted the normal map, which is here, to high hard surface, which then gave me 
the displacement map that I'll be able to use in Mudbox. So as you can see, I'll just minimize and do two. And that's the displacement map that we've got from that normal map there. So I saved out the displacement map as a TGA. And then I went into Maya just quickly. I'll show you here. I went into Maya and it just created a rectangular plane, divided it through the middle and ensured that the UVs were all set up correctly. So they were normalized, but but only halfway to keep the proportions correct. Okay, and then from there, I exported that out as uh, an OBJ and called it low poly. And then went into Mudbox, and here we have, if I just take off these layers, a plane. Okay, and what I've done is, I've took the diffuse from the Photoshop, I saved that out as a TGA, and then I right clicked, import layer, and then, as you can see, the stone relief diffuse, which was the diffuse out of... Uh, Photoshop. I open that up and chose diffuse as the channel. I won't do that now but then that's where the image comes from because I've imported in the low poly plane from Maya with the correct UVs this is UV'd exactly as we looked at in Photoshop. Okay and the next thing that I did was I took the plane and I subdivided this using mesh add new subdivision level or you can use shift and D and just increase the amount of polygons within the plane up to actually 2 million as you can see down here the total because you need a lot of polygons for, for the displacement to work to get all those details there. The next thing to do is the displacement map that we saved out also as a TGA we go into maps, sculpt, sculpt using maps and then uh, there's an operation there already but you would click new operation I'll just show you this one this is what I did earlier and you select the target mesh which is the low poly plane from Maya we select the map which is the displacement map that I took out of uh, from the normal map from Endu 2 and saved it out of uh, Photoshop as a TGA and then I hit go and what happened was, so we're at sub subdivision level, it creates a new layer and as you can see it's just brought out, I'll just unselect that, it's going quite slow because there's quite a few polys in there, as you can see it's pulled out the geometry which is quite nice, really quickly so there's been no sculpting or anything as yet, it's all been done by that displacement map the next thing that I did was I just created a new layer, right click new layer, and just took the smooth brush down here, a top strength of 100, hold down B, left mouse button, push upwards just to increase the brush size, and then went over the actual sculpt and just smoothed it out. As you can see if I just turn that on and off, it's very subtle, but it is there. Just to just to level off those peaks from the displacement. Now what I also wanted to do was use the flatten brush to clean up some of the more irregularities out of the texture. So I grabbed the flatten brush, strength of 7, just to fall off there. I've got the material preset just as grey flat so there's no highlights and I went in and I just flattened. Now just zoom in on this a little so you can see if I turn this on and off you can see it's just cleaned up some of the more irregularities just to clean it up as best as I can now obviously time permitting you can go in there and really clean this up um, and make it look as perfect as possible for your normal map and the last thing that I did was I just wanted to bring some more of the details just just a little bit just out just a little bit more so I got the amplify brush and as you can see it just pops there which is the amplify there strength of 15 and just went over very lightly and just brought out the details again 
and there you can see it. Okay, so from this point we've now got this sculpted sculpted piece that's been generated extremely quickly using the displacement map and what we can do is I then exported at the subdivision level of 10 with the 2 million polygons exported this out as an OBJ so now you've got the low poly plane from Maya with just the two polygons and then you've got the high poly that we've just sculpted here which has got 2 million polygons I exported both of those and I put them into X normal okay so I'll just minimize these windows and here we are with X normal now all I did was right click got the high definition mesh which will be the mesh that's got the 2 million polygons okay right click add meshes and then I added that high poly mesh into this slot pretty much kept everything the same there for this one so it's just a plane low definition meshes that's the mesh from Maya that's just got the two polygons that we're going to use as the game asset okay I imported that into there now you may see that there's got some um, information in there already now what I use in X normal to try and get the best normal maps as I possibly can under tools once you've put in the high poly and the low poly if you go to ray distance calculator if you hit go it will do the calculation so that you get the best cage possible for getting a normal map out quite quickly without having to go in and alter the cage. It may take two to three minutes, sometimes I'll leave it for five minutes while it's calculating. Once it's done, the copy results tab will uh, light, it will become active, and you'll be able to click on that and copy the results of the ray distance calculator, and that's where these calculations will be inputted so you get a really nice normal map in baking options I'll go into where I want to export the actual normal uh, I always name it as whatever the asset is underscore X normal because X normal will append something on the end to say if it's an ambient occlusion or a, a normal map okay in the normal map then I take that the size is a thousand and twenty four by thousand and twenty four so that's the map that we're using okay you could do say a 2k 2048 by 2048 then minimize that down in Photoshop if you want to get a more high quality render edge padding doesn't really matter because you just got the plane uh, keep the bucket size at 64 I take the normal map Okay, go into here. If you was in, uh, putting the game into, say, CryEngine, you'd flip the Y by clicking there and just flipping that to Y minus. Uh, but I'll be using Marmoset to show you this, so I'm going to leave that as plus. Okay, once you've done the normal map, uh, all the settings, you can go to Generate Maps, click that, and it will generate the normal map for you. Okay. Um, you can do these both at the same time, or you can do them separately, but I'll, I normally do it separately. Ambient Occlusion. Uh, once the normal map's complete, I'll go in and look at the ambient occlusion, tick that, go into the options. Now, I put the rays at 300 for this demonstration. Uh, if it was production, I'd probably do it 600 or above uh, to get a really nice occlusion map out of there. Now, again, go in there, generate the maps. It'll be stone relief underscore X normal, then the ambient occlusion prefix on the end. Uh, now, if I go back to Photoshop, we can look at the normal map and the ambient occlusion maps that X normal has just baked out for us there. So if I open up Photoshop, this is the diffuse texture from earlier. Okay, I've imported in the ambient occlusion from X normal that we baked out. If I turn this on, you can just see it just gives a little bit more just to the texture, just to bring those shadows. I've actually, what I've done is I've brought down the opacity of this, put the layer onto multiply, and brought down the opacity to about 24%. Now, as you can see, if I bring this up, it gets a lot darker, but I think that's just a little bit too much. So I like to bring it just down to about, say, 24% for the ambient occlusion. I've also imported in the normals um, that we baked out also. Uh, just open those in Photoshop. As you can see, they've got quite a good, uh, good bit of detail in there. Just zoom in. Um, as you can see, really nice details. That's the uh, beauty of X Normal. Okay, so I've saved out the normals there as a TGA, and I've also saved over the diffuse again as um, a TGA. Just to overwritten that. And now what we can do, we can bring this all into Marmoset.
tool bag an absolutely brilliant program for um, showcasing your your work especially assets and um, what I've done is I've just imported in that low polyplane again so just open mesh brought in the low polyplane that we created in Maya okay uh, output super sampling I always put that to 25 for it if I need to take any screenshots so it's really nice and crisp um, and then materials uh, because we've only got a plane in there, we just we'll just use the default material, so we don't have to create any other ones. And what we'll do is we can start to bring in the textures that we saved out of Photoshop and baked out of X normal. So if I go to the diffuse, okay, uh, stone relief diffuse. Now it's got the ambient occlusion on, and now you can see that's just brought that in. Okay, it's got specularity on there at the moment. I'll just turn that off because we've not got a specularity map in there, so it'd just be flat. Okay, now the next thing we can bring in the normal map. Okay, so I'll save that as stone relief normals. And that was the X normal, uh, X normal normals that we baked out. So I'll open that. As you can see, straight away we start to get that normal map effect. Still the flat plane. That's looking quite nice. Okay, and let's bring in the specularity. So that was the bluish tint on the specular bring that in. To activate that we'll need to go to use specularity and there we go and you can move the sliders around if you wish um, increase the specular intensity but to be honest because it's stone I'm going to keep it quite low specular. I'm going to leave the specular colour at white because we've got the bluish tint in the actual texture or you can put it in there. Specular sharpness doesn't want to be too sharp okay you could put in a gloss map as well but I'll just leave it like this for now and as you can see we've got quite a nice two poly plane that you could put on a wall onto a game asset and uh, that would look quite nice at least it's something that's being created quickly especially under production deadlines if you've got a bit more time you could go in and either sculpt a little bit more or include this into a not just onto a plane like this you could put it into some sort of other ornate relief um, but that's really just using the normal map. But what we can do in Marmoset Toolbag is we can take the displacement map that we created earlier. So I've saved that out as well as just a, a TGA. I'll open that. And now we can also use the displacement function in Marmoset Toolbag. So get the art director back. Say, well, okay, look at this. This is what I'm going to put on the wall. He'll be amazed because it's only took you about half an hour or so. Um, top of the class and all that. And what you can do then is I've left the tessellation at 150. But if I just zoom into this, I can take the displacement scale and I can just bring out even further. Now, if, you, if the game engine permits it, it'd be good to use that displacement map to really push this further out. Now you don't want to go too far because it's going to start looking strange at quite acute angles but as you can see that is just a flat plane but it looks really nice and that would look good in uh, any game environment and people might think oh that's been created in uh, X normal it might take ages to sculpt that but now you know the trick with the displacement map, you can get in there and do something quite quickly. Maybe use this as a base and really go to town on it if you've got the time and really make something really nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, as I say, my name's Pipes. If there's any questions or anything, I'm normally in the forums. Um, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.